Hello class, this is mini lecture number 11. So um, this is for October 28, 2020. Let's get started. So this is about conclusions, which is very apt as we are nearing the end of our semester. So for this lecture, I'm going to talk about some common mistakes that I often see of conclusions, some ways that we can move beyond those common mistakes, and then I will do a little bit of um, discussion about our music video selection for this week. Okay, so before I get started on just looking at conclusions um, in general, I want you to think about story structure. For, so for those of you who have taken your run of the mill um, class or um, any kind of movie theory, film theory, or you just are a very astute watcher of um, visual media, you may notice that story often occurs in three acts. We have act one, where the heroine begins the journey of a question or challenge or obstacle. If you're watching an hour and a half movie, this usually occurs about 15 minutes in. We have act two, the heroine is now on a journey and they're figuring some stuff out, they're running into issues, they are working out that initial question in a myriad of forms. And then finally, act three, the heroine returns home sometimes meaning physically home, often meaning to the original question or problem with the new knowledge and the new way of not reaching a conclusion and deciding whether they are going to win, fail, or meet a um, neutral aspect with this challenge, right? So that is the common struct story structure. So when you are writing your conclusion, you are in act three. And if you've watched any kind of movie um, in your entire life or seen a story, many of you might notice that act three is usually not very long, right? Act three would be about 25% if we're looking at the time total of a film. Act three is where we've already been with this character, we know what they've gone through. We're probably not going to have something new come in. And I like you to think about this story structure when you're thinking about writing, when you're going through writing and, re and especially when you're revising your essays. How do you bring that structure and that often intuitive understanding of story structure into your writing? And I'll be referencing this as we move forward into the, in this today's uh, lesson. So first, let's go through some common mistakes that I see when conclusions. For some of you, you may even have noticed that I actually even put some notation on your papers, um, letting you know that these are things I'd like you to work to to work on. So, one of the big, most major things is summarization. You know, it's like this is what I talked about. I talked about A, B, and C, and now you know my paper has ended. Goodbye. Now, the issue with summarization is that we have already read your paper, right? You've read and written your paper. I now have um, read your paper. I don't need a point by point um, summarization because I've been with you on your journey, right? I've been with you through act one and act two of your paper. So act three should not be a mere summarization of what just happened before. Imagine if you got to a movie you watch a movie and when you got to the very end, they spent 20 minutes explaining the previous um, hour and a half of the, of the movie, right? You would probably be pretty bored or maybe even annoyed because you've already gone through that. That's not what we are there for in Act 3. So thinking about that your conclusion that you, it should not just be a point by point um, summary because we've already been there. Another common mistake is that there's no new understanding. So again, you begin the essay with your thesis, with your problem, with your obstacle, with what journey you're going to take the reader on throughout your paper. Now, if we get to your, if we get to act three of your conclusion and there's no new understanding, there's no new arrival, then we actually have not gone anywhere, right? We've just really gone the circle. Now, of course, there are great essays and movie structures that do that. But oftentimes, if I'm asking you with a prompt to 
really analyze, articulate um, a point, I am asking you to arrive, to show the new understanding that you've arrived at. And that's also goes back in line with summarization that you can't exactly do that if you are just summarizing what's come before. Another common mistake for conclusions is that you introduce a totally different new line of inquiry. Now, this can be great because we can see that, wow, like this, this is a subject matter that can keep on going. But again, we've not reached the end of your paper. So if we get a totally new point that goes in like a very different direction, um, it may seem like, oh, this is now a line of inquiry that should go on and on. So you can almost imagine this as an act three, if like the villain turns out not to be dead, or it's, we, we really want to know what happens after the happily ever after. That means we're going to get a sequel, right? That means that there's going to be something that comes after. So unless you are <laughs> leading us on another journey with another essay, another paragraph, another exploration, we have to be very careful not to, to provide an entirely um, new line of inquiry. That doesn't mean that we are not showing our understanding. It means that if I'm going to now introduce this very deep and amazing point, maybe I should bring that up earlier, or maybe it's not, it doesn't actually belong in this essay. And, and with that, sometimes our conclusions end with this certainty that's a little too on the nose. Now, as you move forward in your writing career, you're going to hopefully learn how to end with a little bit of nuance and open-endedness, because at the end of the day, we are all limited in what we know. So if you end with, and this is the final, <laughs> this is the final end, this is it, um, they, that may work in the movies, but it may not be right when you're talking about um, story structure within a particular short story. There may be more room to move. So if you feel that, if you feel that there's actually still more room to move, you can mention that. You don't have to go on to a whole new paragraph, but be careful um, and mindful of knowing when you can still bring up that there's room to go. And I know that can be a very difficult balance between these two here, but I one of the main things to look at is how much you are balancing them. So if you bring in like one or two sentences or of uncertainty or things that you're still thinking about, that's very, very different than introducing a whole new point that is going to need, that is very um, provocative or interesting that would need even more time to um, develop. So now let's look at the conclusion opportunities, ways that we can improve how we move into our conclusions. So again, if we are looking at story structure, and we're thinking that our conclusion is act three, this is your final farewell. This is your goodbye to the reader. And so we should know what meaning have you come to now? We were there with you of your thesis. We were there for you in the supporting body paragraphs. What, where, where have you now arrived at? And a lot of times that takes one to two sentences to let us know this is now the point that I have arrived at. This is my understanding. This is the this is the way that this my understanding of the beginning is complicated. Also for conclusions, be direct, be concise, and be honest. Most of, um, most obviously, but not always, right? Conclusions usually are not too long. They do not need to be overly wordy in any sense. And it should be honest about what you think. So again, this goes back to the previous slide. If there's a point that you're like, you know what, I actually think that this could complicate this narrative, then maybe you include that. If you realize that, you know, this, if there's something in the paper that truly interests you or did not, be honest about what that is. That is how we write stronger conclusions that actually feel like they are endings. And as usual, the end is always in the beginning. So more, most of the time when people are saying that they have issues finishing a paper, the big issue usually is that they actually have more issues starting the paper. If your introduction or thesis statement is unwieldy, 
weak, narrow, um, or too broad, chances are your conclusion is also going to suffer because the beginning, the act one, is the foundation for act three. So if there is weakness in your ending, chances are there is weakness in the beginning. So sometimes all it is a matter of is actually going back to the thesis, adjusting that, and then coming back to conclusion rather than having to rewrite your entire paper. And this is why thesis statements are so very important that they are strong and that they are adequate to carry the entire paper. And again, as I mentioned with the, with the previous slide, you can offer a question, you can provide uncertainty if the writer, if you as a writer is, are willing and able to do so. So what that means is, you know, if you were looking at act three, you may not introduce a whole new villain and a whole new storyline, but maybe you give a hint, right? Maybe there's a glove that's left and it's a lingering shot and we don't know exactly what's going to happen, right? Whereas if you brought the villain and you showed a close up of this person and they gave a little speech, I mean, that's a very, very different um, exercise than giving a hint of uncertainty. So think about it in that way, right? You can give a hint that, you know, another point that may complicate this is X, Y, Z. That's one or two sentences. You're still giving a, a bit more room for your ending, but you're also not going so far down the road that it seems like you're going to create a whole new paper. And again, these are tactics that you will get better with in time. So now I'll move very quickly to Bad Romance, which is a 2008 music video by Lady Gaga. So it was one of her, um, it was a video that really shaped her career. It really shaped um, the public's understanding of who she was as an artist. So things I'd like you to pay attention to is the use of color and actually the, the use of colorlessness in the, in the music video. What is this pointing towards? Why does she not use, like, what, what typically do these colors represent? And why do you think that she was using them when she used them? I would also like you to look at the explicit and implicit consumer signaling. Again, when we read stories or read images, there are some metaphors and symbol symbolisms that are very, very apparent. And then there's some other things that are a little underlined that we may have to dig for. This video has a lot of signaling towards um, consumer um, purchasing and branding. Some people, and it's very, it's it's very evident that um, she's talking to a specific type of person. So I'd like you to look at what branding is present in the music video. How is it shown, and what does that signify? Why wasn't she more obvious about certain aspects of this branding and less obvious about the others? And then again, as per usual, look at the beginning and the end scenes, meaning what is the arc of this narrative? It may be a little bit more abstract, but when you just look at that beginning image and the ending image, thinking about how those two images are in conversation with each other and what they are signifying as far as what we are to understand is the story of bad romance. So I look forward to seeing your discussion on that on Friday. So your mini lecture homework for this week. I'd like you to find an example from your own life, either in a short story, an essay, a TV episode, or even a film, where the conclusion mirrors introduction. So this may not be an exercise where you pick a very obscure and abstract French New Way film because again, um, experimental films actually often do still play with these uh, motifs, but they may not do so in a way that works for this assignment. So first again, pick, pick an example. I want you to name what this example is. And then I want you in paying particular attention to the conclusion. Please let us know in one to two sentences, one to maybe four sentences, what is the added realization the author wants you to walk away with as seen by the conclusion. How do you know this? So for example, if I look at a film and it starts out with a man sitting in the darkness and snow and ends with the same man outside 
holding hands with his new girlfriend amidst a bed of roses. I may be look be able to deduce from that image at the very end that this is a story about love. This is a story about togetherness. This is a story about how maybe this man found what he was truly looking for but didn't know that he was looking for in the beginning. All just from that from that end image that I did not know. So what is the meaning that you garner from this last image? And how are the ways do you know this? Is it by the words that are included, the image that's there, what's happening in the image? What is this last farewell that the creator, author, or writer wanted you to have as a viewer or reader? So as per usual, post it to the announcements page as a comment by midnight Friday, October 30th. So again, please do that and please continue to work towards your conclusions and making sure that they are saying what you really mean them to say. Thank you all again for tuning in and I will see you next week.